Hey guys, today we're going to check out the newest leverless controller on the scene to see what all the fuss is about and to answer the question, is it worth your $300? So the Kitsune is a brand new all button release from Razer and this marks the first all button release from what I would consider to be a major tech brand. There's both a lot of hype and a lot of divisive opinions surrounding this device, but let's cut through all that to assess for ourselves. I ordered direct from Razer and it shipped extremely fast, just a few days after placing the order. I didn't want to rush the release, so at the time this video drops I've been messing around with it for about a week now. Here's a quick unboxing recap. It came in a small package and inside was the manual, some stickers and the cord. Razer has announced two SF6 character versions, but the only one currently available is this standard black model. So the first byte is with the eye. And to me, it doesn't look like a premium $300 controller right out of the box. That changes a bit when we plug it in, but let's wait on that for just a moment. Just looking straight on, it's a flat black, and overall, fairly unassuming. However, when you turn it over in your hands, you do get some sense of its form factor, and the whole thing does have a very sleek and thin aesthetic. It's a bit smaller than I had pictured, not much longer than a micro actually. However, it does have quite a bit more wrist space, and these are the official dimensions. But back to the color and aesthetic options for a moment. Now this has an aluminum top plate and it looks good when it's clean, but watch as the video continues along. I wash my hands before and after handling fight sticks, but even during this review you'll see oils begin to accumulate on the surface of the Kitsune even before I plug it into game. The fingerprints all wipe off just fine after a play session, but during some intense sets this will look like a picked over charcuterie board. The good news is you'll be able to get a vinyl wrap. The bad news is that it's a vinyl wrap. I like vinyl wraps so much less than the usual plexi over high quality art prints. They just feel cheaper, but maybe that's just me. Still, the good news is that Razer is offering Chun-Li and Kami versions for an additional fee. The bad news is that if you ever remove them, they can't be reapplied. However, if those characters don't appeal to you, the good news is that Razer is also offering a number of their own designs. The bad news is that these are all just currently soulless wallpapers, generic inoffensive art more akin to the world of default screensavers. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so let's look at these button placements. To me, this is a pretty standard layout at first glance, sort of a slightly spread Vulix Shokin Star vibe. You've got your aux and touchpad stuff at the top, and then your movement and action buttons below. Still, they use slightly bigger buttons over JFA micros and flatbox style builds, so that's nice, especially if you're used to more traditional 30mm button layouts. The caps are also deceptively big, similar to those of a Paradise Empress, and I think that's part of the reason for this spacing. As far as the overall placement, Razer played it pretty safe and didn't stray too far from established hitbox style button positions. However, I think this is a missed opportunity to push the FGC toward better ergonomic and gameplay sensibilities. You don't need to have played SF6 very long to see that this is not an ideal layout for that game, so it's a bit counterintuitive to see these branded SF6 character art editions. Having extra keybinds for the drive mechanics would have been so welcome here. And this sentiment continues through other games that also support customizable macro keybinds. Let's normalize putting some of those extra aux functions front and center where we can use them. And I know most other controller companies are also guilty of this and lean too hard on traditional layouts, but I was hopeful that Razer, since they're so big in the industry, would have helped lead the charge in innovation. Not necessarily bad, but this just feels like more of the same. Still, the buttons are comfortable and are definitely on the quieter side. Maybe you can see how comfortable and clicky that like button is if you've enjoyed the video thus far. Now, here's a quick sound check. There is some nice grip padding on the back side. It is here you'll find 9 screw head caps which you'll need to pop out. Then we can use a screwdriver to take off this top panel. When you peel the aluminum cover off, the insides look like this, a lot of plastic. But let's check out these switches. At the time of this video, Razer does not sell standalone switches for the Kitsune, so that means you need to be careful getting these out. I couldn't find my switch puller because that's what happens when you need a tool for a video, so I just ease one out with some precision screwdrivers. 
but I wouldn't recommend doing that. If you damage the switch, you're going to need to invest in a different one, or replace them all, since you can't easily get the exact Razer spares right now. These are indeed hot swappable, and I installed a different switch to test and confirm before putting it all back how it was. I think going forward a lot of the allure of this stickless controller will be its emphasis on optical switches. And not counting keyboards, this is something I haven't really seen much of in these kind of fight stick peripherals. When you plug this in, there are subtle little LEDs that run around the perimeter. You can tweak them to be more subtle with a few key presses shown here. The lights are a nice touch and do a lot to elevate that flat black and take eyes away from all the fingerprint grease. Additionally, there's an interesting cord locking mechanism. I think it's pretty cool, but the downside is that it may not fit and lock correctly with all cables. Not a big deal if you keep this one in good shape, but I had a hard time closing it on another one I tried. This device plays on the PS5 and the PC and nothing in between, which is a shame for PS4 holdouts, but not entirely unexpected. Circling back to these switches, according to the Razer website, they wanted lightning fast switches to provide the speed you need to maximize your whiff punishes. On paper, this seems like a no brainer. The goal of a peripheral is to take what's in your brain and put it into the game as quickly and seamlessly as possible. Initially, I felt like I was dropping more inputs than I normally would, like I would screw up a link by hitting it too early or something. But remember, this was my first time really playing on these style of switches, and 100 years of experience on different non-optical switches meant I just needed more time to adjust. After a while, things felt very good and I liked the vibe. I'm still very new to the world of optical switches, and I don't know if it's the future, but I was glad to have experienced them here. To talk about SOCD cleaning for a moment, the standard set in this device means that when you hold down and then up, it will default to neutral rather than up like in the past. Now this is all normal and compliant with current Capcom Pro Tour rules which they enforce in their SF attorneys. However, many similar devices allow you to change the SOCD cleaning to accommodate other non-Capcom titles. I mention this because I couldn't find anything in the user manual which showed me how to change SOCD cleaning. I'm sure if it's not a true option at this point, they could change that in a software update down the line. At the end of this review, I still have mixed feelings. Here are some of my pros and some of my cons regarding this device. I think it appeals to tech enthusiasts, Razer fanboys, those versed in optical switches, and people who prioritize PS5 compatibility in a portable leverless controller. The thin form factor is great, the wrist space is awesome, and these are quick and easy to get. The Kitsune comes pretty close on a lot of elements, but then makes as many missteps in other areas. I love fight sticks and all button controllers, but I'm not sure the Kitsune speaks to me enough to keep it. There are other controllers which are thinner, other controllers with custom LED options, and other controllers with more interesting layouts. So for $300 plus shipping, I can't say that I'm blown away. To me, the most intriguing element was the choice of switches. That's truly an area that they are pioneering in this space and helps to make them stand out in a sea of options. If Razer can get a few pros known for their lightning fast reactions talking honestly about the benefits of these extremely fast actuating switches, that would likely go a long way to quell some of the naysayers. But at the risk of being that old guy complaining about the price of eggs and fuel and just how much everything costs these days, nearly all PS5 leverless controllers, this one included, are overpriced in my mind. If only PS5 PCBs weren't so expensive. If only there was another cheaper option to bring more build opportunities to the masses. If only. Well, we can dream, can't we? Hey, stay tuned for more weekly fight stick stuff, support your locals, and I'll see you next time.